Hey, 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 partner, come here. Everything's going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. You were just having a bad dream. What is it? Oh, I think he was having a little nightmare. Oh, sweetheart, sweetheart. Mommy's here now. Mommy's here. You don't have to be afraid. Earthquake, earthquake. No, it, it's all right. There's no more earthquake. It's all over now. It's all over. You weren't there. Only Santana and Uncle Cece were there. I know, sweetheart. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I wasn't there. I, but I'll never leave you again. I promise. I'll never let you go again. Okay? Santana wasn't as good as having you, Mommy. <clears throat> it's getting late. Let's not be tyrannized by time. Mm. You know something? What? There are a couple of people in this world I can't stand. Maybe more, but at least a couple. One of them is me. The other one is Gina DeMott. Really? I thought you liked Gina. Yes. She's, uh... A very likable person. What's not to like? That's the problem. I wish I could hate her, but I can't. I mean, she's a lovely woman, a wonderful mother, and she's living in Cece's house. Can't argue with that. <sighs> you know, Cece's paying an awful lot of attention to her lately. An awful lot of attention. Santana, will you forget about my father? He's not good enough for you. Besides, we agreed we wouldn't let him come between us, remember? Yeah, you're right. You did. Is there anybody that you can't stand? Oh, lots. My father, part of the time. Anybody else? Peter Flynn. Well, at least you like yourself. On his deathbed, that man tried to destroy me. May have succeeded, for all I know. Kelly was there. She believed every word he said. What did he say? Uh, I can't tell you. I'm sorry. I've got to stop thinking about Peter and my father. I'm going to drive myself crazy. I think you should do the same thing with Gina and my father. I want some music. Um, let's dance. I need to hold you in my arms. I'm sorry, I was in such a rush. No, it's I... all right. You help. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, I think I'll be staying in Brandon's room for a few nights until he gets used to the house and settled in. Well, that's a good idea. How about you? Are you getting used to the house? Oh, yes. It already feels like home to me. Good. That's the way I'd want it. Well, thank you very much for uh, taking us both in. We love being here. I love having you here. Good night. Good night.
Well, my darling, looks like I might have found you a new daddy. That's right. We've reserved room number four for you this afternoon. Late this afternoon, all evening, right? As long as you need it. Terrific. Thanks a lot. Okay. Did they give you a room number? It's all taken care of for... Wonderful. Now we've got them right where we want them. Hey, guys, look at you, our I'll get hey, it. Hey, didn't that phone ever stop ringing? Hey, you better hope it doesn't. That is money calling right there. Risky business. Hiya, honey. Uh, listen, I'd like to book a room for this afternoon and part of the evening. Uh, do you have any vacancies? Uh, yes. Your name, please. Jane. Jane Doe. Oh, okay. Uh, I just want you to know that our rooms are for recreational purposes only. Oh, sure. Sure. Actually, I want to use it to meditate in. Meditate? Yeah. yeah. I'm meditating about going into a religious order. Four? Yeah, this afternoon and evening. And uh, we ask for cash in advance. Honey? Don't we all. <laughs> I'll see you later. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Anderson. Come on in. How are you? Oh, fine. You were really nice to spend the night with Matt. Oh, no, it was my pleasure. He's a good kid. Have you heard any word on the parents? No, but the whole neighborhood's on the lookout for them. God, they went for that drive. They could be anywhere. And I keep telling them we're going to find them. Poor little thing. You know, his parents, they're good people. And they've been able to keep Matt out of trouble. Hold on. Sure. Hi, Hi. Uh, Well, I checked all the hospitals in, in the morning, but uh, his parents weren't there. Oh, no luck? Oh. Uh, well, at least that's good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, Cruz, this is... Uh, uh, Mrs. Anderson, sorry, and this is Matt's neighbor. This is Cruz Castillo. How do you do? I'm Hildy. Hildy, you uh, you know Matt's parents? Yes, Frank. Uh, he organized the neighborhood oh, watch around. Oh, Mrs. Anderson. Hi, Matt. I thought that. I know. I'm sorry. Nobody's found them. They're still gone. Yes, but they are still looking, aren't you? That's right. You bet we are. They're gone. They're not coming back. No, that's not true. 
Now, didn't I promise you that we would find him today? Hmm? Uh, Eden. We yes. are. Now you got to get dressed because we're going to have a busy day, all right? You sure? I'm sure. Scoot. Well, I hope you're right. Look, please let me know if there's anything that I can do. Yeah. And it was so nice meeting you, Mr. Castillo. No, the pleasure was mine, Hilda. All right, dear. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Thank you. It's been a long night. It's going to be a longer day. You know, we have no way of knowing if we're going to find him today. That was a dumb thing to promise him. It wasn't dumb. He can't give up hope. It's important for him to be optimistic and cheerful right now. Yeah, but, but Eden, it's going to make it all the harder on him if we come up empty. We are not going to come up empty. I promised him that we will find his parents today, and we will. And look, it's important for me not to give up hope, too, you know. So stop being such a wet blanket, all right? Mason. That's right, Peter. How are you? Jim Dandy. How are you? Good. So am I. How's Kelly? She's better. Good. Good. I think I'm doing better, too. Well, I'm a little surprised to see you here. Thought after that bombshell I dropped, the look on your face. <laughs> yeah, I guess that made a pretty big splash in our community, didn't it? The fact that Joe Perkins will be exonerated will be in the papers, Peter, but not the rest of it. You didn't really think that would get out of this room, did you? I hope. How did you know I was listening when you said that? Oh, I saw your reflection in the mirror over there. Of course. <laughs> yeah, you were trying to hide from me. Made me angry. So you lied out of spite. Well, that won't stick, Peter. It'll be your word against mine. Oh, I'm not going to take back anything I said, Mason. See, I was a dying man. I believed I was dying. Kelly believed I was dying. She believed what I said was the truth. You know, I... I died happy. Thanks to you. Thanks to that look on your face. I'm sure. You know, it's kind of interesting. I, I've heard stories about this before, about these kind of experiences. I was actually out of my body. Now, I could see the doctors and the nurses working over me. I could see Kelly being taken out of here. And you, you stayed behind. <laughs> you know, I was, I was floating over the room. Looking down, I, I even knew what was being said. I could hear that Kelly said she wanted to stay, and then you came to the end of the bed, and, and you cursed me, Mason. Some nurse told you that. You couldn't have heard that. Oh, I heard it. <laughs> yes, I heard it. I, I actually died for a few minutes. While I was dead, I even knew what you were thinking. <laughs> I could read your thoughts. I know that you wanted me dead, but you knew you needed me alive. Oh, God. <laughs> this kind of hurts, you know? It's ironic, though, isn't it? It's ironic how much you hate me, and yet you know you need me alive. Well, I'm going to live, Mason. But you're going to be sorry I did. <laughs> you know this, but you are absolutely beautiful when you're asleep. I love my flower. Oh, I'm glad. How are you feeling? Much better. You're looking great. <laughs> Tell me what you've been doing. Oh, well, been taking care of the family, looking for a job. Good. How's your mom and sisters? They're doing all right. I think it's been hardest on Jade, but she'll pull through. Oh, I'm glad. I got a job. Hey, mm -hmm. what? Well, I'm working on this construction crew. There's a lot of rebuilding that's going on since the earthquake. Oh, that's great news, Joe. I've got some good news. What's that? I could not wait to tell you this. Peter finally admitted to me that he knew you didn't kill Channing. I can't believe it. 
to be finally exonerated after all this time by Peter of all people. This is fantastic. I do. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You all right? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Peter told you. I don't believe it. This is fantastic. Yep. And now the authorities can do everything that has to be done to have this thing cleared up. It's taken so long. I just wish my father were alive to hear it. it would have meant so much to him. Joe, he believed in you in the end. And he did it before you were officially exonerated, which is even more important. Yeah, I know that. Still, it would have made him happy. But think about how the girls and mom are going to feel about this. They can finally be proud of me. And you know what else? It means that I can walk down the street in broad daylight with you. Yeah, it better be with me. Hey. We can be seen together in public together. It's like a whole new world opening up. I know for us. it is. We can make up for all those times we lost the past five years. You bet we will. I told Daddy about it. Yeah, what did he say? Oh, he was really surprised. He also felt sorry for you for what you had to go through. I think my whole family's going to feel differently toward you now. Okay, I have been waiting for this. Now people aren't going to be ashamed to know me. I can't wait to tell Cruz. Yes. And you know what else? I won't have to settle for some construction job. I can really hunt down some real job opportunities. Joe, how soon can we really be married? Only as soon as I can afford to support us. Come on, let's do it right now. Come on, help me up. Let's go call the uh, minister and go right now. No, 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 no. You have to get well, and all, we have a lifetime together, baby. Oh, Joe, I'm so happy for us. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's been a hell of a long road for me from the day I was arrested until. But somehow this all makes up for it, doesn't it? I guess there really are happy endings. Happy beginnings. Yeah, you know what? Yesterday was Thanksgiving. I really do have something to be thankful. I hope you get well very soon, Peter. I'm anxious for you to be up and about, because as soon as you are, I'm going to bring charges against you. Me? For what? The attempted murder of Joe Perkins. Seriously, Mason, don't make me laugh, okay? For long, Peter. You won't have much to laugh at. You know, I, I really enjoy seeing you squirm, Mason. Your threats don't mean any anything to me. Because I've discovered the truth, you see. And it's the truth that's going to uh, set me free. And what's going to happen to you is a heck of a lot worse than anything you could ever do to me. We'll see about that. But it's obvious, Mason, you have so much farther to fall. Hey, tell me, how are you ever going to explain being in the same room where Channing was murdered five years ago, huh? Tell me, how are you going to account for that? Shut up. <laughs> you know, I saw you use some kind of secret panel. I went looking for it later on. Guess what? I got lucky. You're lying again, as usual. Oh, Mason, will you stop saying that to me? You know I'm telling the truth. I saw you go over to Channing's body and then run back behind the secret panel in the bookcase right before Joe and the other man ever came into the room. I guess that puts you and I in the same boat, doesn't it? What do you mean? Well, we both know that uh, Joe did kill Channing. But you see, your sin is greater because you helped to prosecute him. Yeah, you nailed the nails right into his coffin. I may be doing the same thing for you today, Peter. Poor Kelly. Must have killed her when I told her about you. Wait until C.C. finds out. Wait until your precious father finds out. I wonder what he's going to think of you. You know, nobody would have believed me if I would told him this before. Since I was on my deathbed, they took it as gospel. You've lost, Mason. You know you've lost. You can't get away with this, Peter. I won't let you. Kelly's going to... Want to know all the details, you know that? Everyone else will eventually. I guess I'll just have to prepare myself for that. Maybe you'll get to go to prison, Mason. What do you think? Mason! You know, I called your office and they said you were here. I was so worried about you when you left my house. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Well, you went to see Peter. How is he doing? Oh, better. He might live. Mason, take it easy. Yeah. Hey, listen. I want to be with you. 
Would you mind if I invite myself to your house for lunch today? I mean, my mother said that you were going to have some people over. Would you mind? I'd like to join you. Yeah, that'd be terrific. I'd like to have you there. Good, I'm glad. <laughs> I also like the idea of your being my date in front of my father. Well, I'll be sure and be very attentive to you, all right? <laughs> Good. That should irritate him. Okay. Thank you. For what? Being here, being with me, means a lot to me. Mason, wait. Kelly, I can't right now. I've got a lot to do. Will you please come here? Kelly, how are you doing? Okay. okay. Fine, thanks. Okay. Excuse us for a minute sometime? Okay, sure. What is it? I want to talk to you. I asked Ted to have you come to my room yesterday. Why didn't you? I was busy. I had a lot to do. Well, then talk to me now. I can't right now. I'm in a hurry. I told you that. When are you going to find time to talk? I don't know. I'll come when I can. In the meantime, stop sending me messages, okay? Mason! Well, everything is beginning to look a lot better here. Mm, there's a lot more work before this house is restored. What do you say we um, go take the car and drive somewhere? Oh, come on, we can't leave Danny here alone. We could. But I guess we won't. Hey. No, oh, come on. Hey, come on, don't you two ever stop? Hey, Mustang. Do you know that Bottoms is in the living room with your dad? Yeah, I know. I know. What do you think? Is he digging our graves? No, no, no. Bottoms is just giving him the annual fall report about the terrible condition of the school. And of me. Do you think Bottoms will show up at the motel today? He has room number four reserved. Let's just be really careful that he doesn't recognize any of us when we give him the key. Oh. Yeah. yeah. If he recognizes, I bet you he dropped it. <laughs> we dropped it. <laughs> you know, I don't like Michael Adams that much, but I'm sure glad he told us about Bottoms. I know. That was really nice of him. Yeah, well, I'd rather have him on our side than against us. Yeah. Well, I just think he's on Jade's side too much. That's what worries me. You guys, careful. Here they come. Uh, listen, I'm going to go. Okay. I'll catch you guys later. Okay. Right. I just see you. Let me check the motel. Sure. Okay. Of course, with uh, private donations such as yours, Mr. Capwell, we'll be able to maintain the high academic standards our school is known for. Ah, oh, Lakin. Hi. Ted. Hello, oh, Mr. Bottoms. Miss Bottoms, thank you for coming by. Uh, could I offer you a drink or something? Oh, no, thank you, thank you. I have to get home. I have a heavy day of grading papers, and my mind must be clear. Razor shop. I'll see you at uh, school uh, Monday morning, children. Again, Mr. B Mr. Capwell, I'd like to thank you very much for your help and understanding. Of course. It was nice talking with you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Ted, I'm not happy. Why? Mr. Bottoms didn't explain what was going on, but he's not very pleased with your behavior at school. I haven't done anything. Oh, Eden, Cruz. Hi. Hello, Mr. C. Well... What have we here? Well, this is Matt Powell. Matt, this is my dad. Have I told you about my dad? Hello, Mr. Powell. Wow, this is some place. I bet it's something like Muhammad Ali lives in. <laughs> well, that's not such a bad comparison, is it, Dad? <laughs> I think that means that we have arrived. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt got separated from his mother and father during the earthquake, and we've been trying to help him find them. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Matt. It's okay. They'll turn up. They're probably just lost or something. <laughs> I got lost once. Wow, a lot of stuff got smashed around here. Yeah, our house got pretty damaged, didn't it? Worse than what happened at the apartment we live in. <laughs> Eden, why don't you see if Matt would like something to eat? We've got a whole buffet over there. All right. You leave food sitting out like that? Won't it spoil? Not if we eat it fast, pal. Come on. Well, looks like quite a gathering. Oh, it's hardly that. It's just a little post-Thanksgiving gathering. How are you, Santana? Fine, thank you. Mason was nice enough to invite me to come along. That's fine. I'm glad you're here. Mason, would you excuse me? I'm going to say hello to Gina. Of course. Mason, what about Peter? Have you talked to him? Briefly. Well, did he give you any more information? No, I'm afraid not. He just told you that... Joe Perkins didn't shoot Channing. There's nothing more, no, how or when, how long he's known about it? No. I don't understand. I thought he would give us more details than that. He's much too sick to talk about much of anything right now. I'm sure he'll tell us more in time. I hope so. Excuse me. 
Everyone, please, may I have your attention. First of all, I would like to welcome a young man who is among us today. We hope that his family is found soon, and uh, in the meantime, we're glad that he's with us. Personally, I have a, a great deal to be thankful for today. We've all survived a, a terrible catastrophe, but we're going to make a new beginning. And in the process of repairing the damage to us, I would also like to rectify some of the damage to the life of Joe Perkins, whom we now know was not responsible for my son's death. I'm going to see to it that all of the harms done to him will be compensated for. And I'd like all of the old wounds healed to all of us, family and friends, and for us to gather here in complete harmony and love. I toast you all. Here, here. Here, here. Cece, you're a generous, wonderful man, and you have a good, kind heart. But what if we don't? What if we never find them? Now, Matt, I told everybody I could think of, and they've already got this massive search going on in all the mountains and the canyons. So everything that can be done is being done. Yeah, we're going to find them. Don't worry. Well, we're we're going to do our best. You know, you can't get a straight answer out of this guy, but I promise you that we'll find him today, okay? You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Listen, how do you like this fountain? It's pretty. Yeah? You like it? You know, when I was your age, I used to come sneaking in here, and when my dad wasn't looking, I'd take off my shoes and walk around in it. What do you say? You're never too old. Nah, I'd get my tail turned. No, you wouldn't, because I said you could. Why don't you take off your shoes? Come on. Come on, Cruz, you can join us if you'd like. I'm allergic to water, Eden. Oh, no, you're allergic to fun. What up? Feel that cold? Oh, it's freezing, isn't it? Did you know that thousands of people make pilgrimages to this fountain every year just to dip their feet in it? It's said to have magical properties. Well, why don't you come join us, Mason? Mmm. It's more fun when nobody's watching. Ah, you'd be surprised. It seems that my, uh, my daughter hasn't grown up as much as I thought. That's right. Hi, you having fun, Matt? Yeah, it's well. Mason, would you excuse me again? I'll be right back. Sure. <clears throat> I'm going to get a bite. No! No, don't! I got it. Hello? Mason, it's Kelly. Well, hello. Who would you like to speak to? You. I want to know when you're going to come down here and talk to me about Peter. I told you, when I get around to it, I'm busy at the moment. I'm warning you, Mason. You'd better get around to it soon. Because if you don't, I'm going to call a press conference and the police, too, and then tell them everything I know. In fact, you've got about a half an hour before I pick up the phone. It's room number four right over there. Now just relax and meditate to your heart's content. Thanks, Belle. Sometimes it's a real drag having to come here and work. Yeah, it's gonna be like a real steady job, isn't it? Yeah. I don't mind. 
Well, I've got my uh, Lincoln with me. Oh, true oh, love. Hey, I don't knock until you've tried it, Danny. Wait a second. It's red alert, Mr. Bottoms is here. Yeah, let's yeah. Yeah, come in. <clears throat> Anybody here? Yeah. Oh, uh... I, uh, I have a room reservation. My name is, uh... Smith. Smith. Josiah Smith. Yeah, right. Yes, here it is. Now, listen. We have very strict rules here. No loud music. No hanky-panky with women. This is strictly a legitimate operation here. This is mainly for kids who want to get away from teachers, parents, to study, talk with fellow students. I'm sure. <laughs> All right, let's see, here it is. Four. We're very nice people here. Enjoy yourself. Have a nice rest. now before I give those kids the surprise of their love. Well, man, I can't tell you what good news that is. Are, are you sure they're okay? That's terrific. Listen, could, could you bring them here? The Capwells. That'd be great, yeah. We'll, we'll be waiting right here for you. Okay, and, and thanks again. Uh, you guys just made a lot of people real happy. Okay, bye. Eden? Eden? Can I talk to you? Yeah. Why, what is it? I have some rather good news. What? As usual, you were right. What is it? The helicopter guys just found Matt's parents. Really? Yeah, North of Goleta, stuck in their car in the bottom of a ravine. They had a little trouble getting to him, but once they did, everything was fine. They were oh, a little bruised wonderful. and hungry, but basically, well, they're alive. I can't believe it. That's yeah, so great. Pretty righteous news, isn't it? Yeah. Well, where are they now? They're on their way right over here in a chopper right now. Oh, that's wonderful. I guess uh, you called it pretty well, huh? Maybe you ought to take up fortune telling. I was so scared. You don't know. I thought, what if they don't find his parents, you know? I've got to tell him. No, no. Why don't we uh, hold on a second and not tell him right now? Why? Well, they're going to be here any minute, and, uh, you know, he'll see for himself they're safe. Otherwise, they're going to be standing in the doorway worrying about him and Yeah, yeah. Waiting it's going to be easier that way. I'm so relieved. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, we are pretty happy, huh? I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking. I was only reacting. I think we uh, think too much sometimes. I like you better when you just react. Thought my phone call would bring you running. Didn't bring me running, Kelly, but it brought me, since you seemed on the verge of hysteria on the phone, I thought I'd come try to talk some sense into you. I've seen you worm your way out of too many situations before, but you're not going to this time. Has it occurred to you that you've only heard one side of the story? Yeah, well, if it's the true side, Mason, it's the only side I have to hear. But it isn't. You've heard one distorted version of the story. I don't think you should make a judgment until you've heard my side of it, too. Look, I heard a man on his deathbed tell me things about you. You know, I can't believe it. I want to believe in you, Mason, but there can't be any explaining away of what you've done. Kelly. Why did you take so long to come talk to me? I sent for you, Mason. I had Ted beg you to come see me, and you refused. Ted didn't beg me. He said you wanted to see me immediately, and I was busy. I came when I could. Yeah, only after I threatened to call the police, and then suddenly you have all kinds of time. <sighs> Kelly, what difference does it make? I'm here now. Yeah, well, it's too late, Mason. Because as far as I'm concerned, you've as much as admitted to me that Peter was telling the truth. I haven't admitted any such thing, and I can't believe you take Peter Flint's word over mine. I mean, forget the fact that I'm your brother. To trust a man like Peter with his background. Well, I would in this case because of the circumstances. I don't care how many awful things he's done in his life. You don't know the half of it. No, I know all of it. I know he was a male prostitute when he was in Miami, and I know that he let Joe go to prison. And that he tricked him into meeting him because he intended to kill him. But in spite of all that, Mason, I think what you, my brother, did is even worse. And I hate you for it. You're being hysterical and very, very foolish. Then tell me something to convince me that I'm wrong. Don't just stand there and tell me that I ought to believe in you because we're related. Prove to me you didn't let an innocent man spend five years of his life in prison and you lied to me every day of every year that he was there. 
biggest problem that we have now are finding contractors and workers expert enough for the kind of rebuilding that this house requires. Bruce? That helicopter sounds like it's landing. I think I know what that is. Excuse me. Do all of Cruz's friends arrive by helicopter now? I think it's uh, Matt's parents. Oh, that's wonderful. I think he's going to be one happy boy. Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm going to go meet him, okay? And you make sure he stays here, all right? Okay, I'll watch him. Hey, hi. I'm uh, Cruz Castilla. Yeah, how you doing? Is that son here? Uh, hey, yeah. Helicopter pilot said that. Oh, no, he's here. Don't worry. Come on. Oh, thank God. We were so afraid. He's okay. Oh, you bet. He's fine. I want to tell you, you got one fine young boy, too. Yeah, I'm Frank Powell, and uh, this is my wife, Barbara. Nice to meet you. Really, this is Eden Capwell, uh, Frank and Barbara Powell. It's nice to meet you. We're glad to be here. Is, is he inside? Yeah, he's here. We didn't tell him that you were coming because we wanted him to be surprised when you were here. We were really worried about him. You know, we stuck up in the canyon. And if the police hadn't come, I don't know what... It must have been a rough time for you, huh? It's one of the roughest times we ever spent. You must be starved. Do you want something to eat? Oh, no. Hello there. We just want to see our boy. Mr. C., this is Matt's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Powell. How you doing? Mr. Capwell. Good to meet you. Ah, uh, we were so worried after Eden told us what happened. Oh, thank you so much for taking care of our boy. Oh, thank my you, daughter man. did all that. Oh, it was my pleasure. Look, um, let me go get him for you, okay? He's going to be so surprised and excited. Hold on one second. Would you folks like something to eat or drink? Mm -mm, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I just want to see my boy. What? Um, I want you to meet somebody right now, okay? Me? Yeah. Yeah, right now. In a minute. This guy's beating me to pieces. Oh, yeah? Well, I think you should come now. How about that? Back in a minute, Brandon. Don't cheat while I'm gone. What's cheat? You've got a lot to learn. <laughs> Good one. Mom, look! You Man, did it! Baby! What are you doing? What are you doing? Let me see it. Oh, baby! You all right? Yeah, I knew you'd come. I knew it. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Things will be all right. Mr. Bottoms, you should have heard me. <laughs> what did you tell him? Well, we agreed. You think you fell for it? Oh, sure. Yeah. Why not? Anyway, he's in room number four. Number four? That number four? Sure, why not? Danny, I just put a woman in room number four. You what? Jade, we reserved room number four for Mr. Bottoms. We wrote it down. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see it. Oh, we've got to do right. something. No, everybody, don't worry. It's all right. There's no problem. See, she's not a real woman. She's just a religious student, okay? So don't worry about it. I'm missing the Bucharest String Quintet. Something better happen soon. I'll be right out, honey. I thought so. I think you're wrong. I think one of us should go in there and warn Mr. Bottoms. But it's too late. He's in the room. And so is the girl. She said she only wanted to meditate, so what can go wrong? Well, I've always wanted to be expelled from Lyman Prep. Actually, I'm looking forward to going to military school. Maybe I can be the next General Pat. No way. I won't let that happen. I'll go with you. Hey, are military schools co -ed? Maybe I'll go with you. Oh, thanks a lot, you guys. We're all going to be expelled from our classes, so why don't we just start making plans? I mean, he's going to come over to your school and expel you, Danny. I wonder what is going on in room number four now. Anybody's guess. room that night he died, weren't you, Mason? No, I wasn't. Yes, you were. Peter said you were there and you got out behind the panel behind the bookcase. I don't care what Peter said, Kelly. 
There's no way we can talk rationally, no point in our talking at all, if you refuse to believe anything I tell you. Yeah, well, I don't think I'll believe anything you say to me again, Mason. <sighs> then why am I here? Because I'd hoped you'd tell me the truth. No, not the truth. You wanted me to admit to everything Peter accused me of, but that's not the truth. You knew Joe was innocent. And not only didn't you come forward, you actually gathered evidence for the prosecution to make sure he had a speedy and just trial. And I remember your words exactly. Speedy and just, Mason. You said he was entitled to that. Mason, you made me testify against Joe when you knew he was innocent. You made me testify against him. I hate you for that, and I hate myself for doing it. And then when Joe got out of prison, you and Peter put your heads together and trumped up that cocaine possession charge against him to make sure he'd go back to prison. I had that charge dropped, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, only after I forced you to do it and only after Joe almost got himself killed. Kelly, why won't you listen to my side of all you know, this? You know, you were probably the one that had the bus window shot out on his way back from prison and you're probably responsible for whoever bombed Joe's house that night. That's a lie. I had nothing to do with either of those incidents. What do you think I am, Kelly? I think you're a liar and you're a jealous and vengeful man. I knew you hated Channing, but why Joe, Mason? Why were you so against him? He had already taken the blame for Channing's death and he'd served his sentence. Oh, but I do know. Of course. You were afraid that he'd keep up with the investigation of who really killed Channing. Right? And then, I suppose if he got out of prison and just took off, everything would have been fine. But he made the mistake of going back to Santa Barbara, back to his home and his family, and back to me. And that's when Peter decided to throw in with you isn't it? When he started thinking he was losing me to Joe. Kelly, if you don't calm down, I'm going to have someone have you sedated. Oh, yeah, I bet you'd like that, wouldn't you, Mason? Someone to put me asleep and shut me up. Yeah, well, first it was Peter and you, and now Peter's telling the truth on you. Kelly, I'm beginning to think you're having a nervous breakdown. You know, Mason, you have committed crimes, big crimes, and I'm going to make sure the world hears about them, and I'm going to see about sending you to prison for years and years. And I don't care if you are my brother. 